My name is Rick Renner, and today I'm in the Judean wilderness. This is the very wilderness where Jesus was tempted by the devil. We read about this in Luke chapter 4, verse 1. Jesus had just been baptized in the Holy Spirit in the River Jordan, just not too far from here. And the Bible tells us in Luke 4, 1, Jesus was immediately led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And in the wilderness, Jesus defeated the devil with the power of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. And then Luke tells us in Luke chapter 4, verse 14, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him throughout all the regions round about, and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. Now listen to this in verse 16. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. We know that he picked up the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, and he read, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and listen to this in verse 21, and he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Jesus was literally announcing that he was the Messiah, and with the reading of that text, Jesus launched his ministry. But it all began in the River Jordan when Jesus was baptized in the Holy Spirit, then came into this wilderness where he defeated the devil, and then after this great trial, after this great conflict with spiritual forces in the wilderness, Jesus returned in power and launched his ministry. That's what the baptism in the Holy Spirit does. It changes everything. It launches everything. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insight and understanding from the Word of God. Here's Rick. This is Rick Renner, and I want to say thank you for letting me come right into your house today. And as I told you in the introduction to today's program, today we're going to focus on the baptism in the Holy Spirit. You know, when Jesus received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it's remarkable that the Holy Spirit immediately led him into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil and in that temptation experience, Jesus really discovered that he was greater than all the forces of hell because he had received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And that's what happens to you. When you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you receive a power that is so substantial. It gives you more power, more authority than all the enemy's forces that are arrayed against you. Even in your weakest state, you're greater than the enemy. That's what we find. We really saw that in the last program. By the way, if you didn't hear the last program, go to the archives. You need to hear it. And if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, let us pray with you. We would love to pray with you. Or maybe you know somebody that needs to receive it and you don't know how to lead them into them. Give them our phone number. We'll pray with them and they'll get baptized in the Holy Spirit. By the way, we're offering you my series called The Baptism in the Holy Spirit. You know, when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, it changed my life, transformed my life. And somebody gave me a book back in those early, early, early years by Oral Roberts, which was called The Baptism of the Holy Spirit and the Value of Speaking in Tongues Today. That book just set me on fire. It transformed me. And that's why I want you to have this series. I believe it will affect you like that book affected me. It comes with a great study guide. It talks about all the work of the Holy Spirit and the baptism in the Holy Spirit, what happens, why you need it, what it does in you. And it comes with an awesome study guide. And we're also offering you my book, which is called The Holy Spirit and You Working Together as Heaven's Dynamic Duo. You and the Holy Spirit together are a dynamic duo. But today we're going to cover the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And I want to tell you up front, that on the last of these programs this week, I'm going to be answering your questions about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. You've been sending me questions, and I'm going to answer them on the last program this week. It's going to be great, so make sure you're with me every day this week all the way to the end. But grab your Bible, and today we're going to return to the book of Luke, where we're looking 
at the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And we're going to see that when you receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, you are empowered to minister to other people. It's not just about you. It's about letting the power flow through you to make a difference in other people's lives. Maybe you know someone that's depressed or you know someone that is in need of physical healing. Maybe someone who is despondent and how you want God to move in their life. God wants to move in their life. He wants to unleash his power in them through you. That's what the baptism of the Holy Spirit does. You become a conduit for divine power to flow in you, through you, to other people. And we're going to see this today in the Gospel of Luke. And we're going to begin Luke chapter 3, verse 16. Very quickly review just a few verses from yesterday. And in Luke chapter 3, verse 16, John the Baptist is preaching at the River Jordan. And John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet, of whose shoes I'm not worthy to unloose, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Twice in this verse, the word baptize is used. John says, I baptize you with water. Now, I know that there are some denominations that sprinkle, and I don't want to argue with anybody about whether you should sprinkle or immerse. But the word baptize means to fully immerse, to fully immerse. In fact, it is from an old Greek word, baptizo, which means to dip and die, and in its earliest usage, it described the process of dipping a cloth or garment into a vat of color to dye it, leaving it there long enough for the material to soak up the new color and then pulling that garment out of the dye with a permanently changed outward appearance. It was in the dye so long, it soaked up all the new color, and when you pulled the garment out, it didn't even look like the same garment. The Greek word baptizo here translated to baptize, it means to fully immerse. But here's what John the Baptist says. He really tells us two things. First of all, he was fully immersing people under the water in the River Jordan. This wasn't sprinkling, this was full immersion. Secondly, he says, in the same way, I'm completely putting you under the water. The one coming after me, that's Jesus. He's going to baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire. He is going to put you under the power of God. You're going to stay in the power of God so long. You're going to saturate the power of God. And when we pull you out, you're not going to be the same. Everything about you will be different. You'll be transformed in your own eyes, even in the eyes of others. You will be permanently changed, dipped and dyed in the power of God. That's what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is and what it does for you and for me. But the Bible tells us in Luke 3, verse 21. Now, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heavens were opened. Verse 22. And the Holy Ghost, that's what the King James Version says, the Holy Ghost descended like a dove upon him. That word like is the Greek word hos. It really doesn't mean like, it means as. It doesn't mean that a bird floated through the sky and landed on Jesus but the Holy Spirit came like a dove. Doves are gentle. And the Holy Spirit came gently and rested upon Jesus. And in this moment, Jesus received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. He received power from on high for his ministry, which would enable him to minister to others and to resist the work of the devil. And the Bible tells us in chapter four and verse one, and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost, that word full, the Greek word pleres, it means to be full, to be complete, lacking nothing. That's what you get when you get the baptism in the Holy Spirit. You receive so much power, you're full, you're complete, you lack nothing, you have everything you need. And Jesus discovered that when he was tempted by the devil in the wilderness because he had everything he needed. He was full, he was complete, he lacked nothing. There was no deficiency at all. The devil came to test him. By the way, that word test or the word tempt is the Greek word pirazo, which means to test something to see what is its real quality. Is it really what it says that it is? Can it live up to its reputation? Jesus had received the power of God. The devil came to tempt him to see, will he break? Will this experience really hold him up? Does he really have the authority that he thinks that he has? And when the devil tested him, he found out Jesus was everything he said he was. The power was everything it boasted to be. Jesus, even in his physical weak state, had everything he needed to resist all the temptations of the devil. And that's what you have 
when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That is amazing to me. And in Luke chapter 4, verse 2, the Bible says he was there being tempted of the devil 40 days. Wow. And in chapter 4, verse 14, we find that Jesus did not leave the wilderness broken and defeated. He left the wilderness in power. We saw in the last program that in the Gospel of Mark, um, Matthew chapter 4 and verse 1, the Bible says Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness. Led up in Greek is the word anago. To leave a lower realm to go up into a higher realm. When Jesus went into the wilderness, God's intention was to take him into our breakthrough to take him into a new level of authority, a new level of power. This wasn't just a geographically higher place. Jesus was going from one place spiritually up into a new place. And when Jesus came out of the wilderness, the verse says he returned in the power of the Spirit. And that word power is the word dunamis. And the word dunamis describes explosive superhuman power that comes with enormous energy and produces phenomenal, extraordinary, and unparalleled results. That's the kind of power Jesus came out of the wilderness in. This word depicts mighty deeds that are impressive, incomparable, and beyond human ability to perform miraculous power or miraculous manifestations. And there's something else very important. This word dunamis is the old Greek word which described the full might of an advancing army. It really described the Roman army. When the Roman army advanced, they were called dunamis. They had might. They had power to conquer everything that they were marching into. That's the kind of power which was released in Jesus through the baptism in the Holy Spirit. It was advancing power. And that's the same kind of power that is in you. And in Luke 4, verse 15, the Bible tells us, And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. But wait, wait, wait. Look at chapter 4, verse 16. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Verse 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Now listen to this famous verse, Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Then we're going to read verse 19. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to de preach deliverance to the captive, and recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. In this verse, Jesus describes what the baptism in the Holy Spirit does. Remember when he was in the River Jordan and the Holy Spirit came upon him, that word upon, the Greek word epi, the Holy Spirit literally came up on him. Now in this verse, Jesus is referring to that moment when the Holy Spirit came upon him, when he received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. He said, here is why I've received this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has lighted upon me. He has empowered me. He says, because, and even in Greek, the word because is important. The word because means because on account of, and it indicates purpose. He says, I didn't just receive this for the sake of power or to say that I've gotten something. It's come in me. It's come upon me to do something. And here's what the power of God has come to do. It's going to enable me to minister to others. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. You see, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a divine anointing. Now, what does the word anointed really mean? The word anointed is taken from the old Greek word creo. And I'm going to read to you from my notes. It originally denoted the smearing or rubbing of oil, medicine, or perfume upon an individual. It was used in a medical sense for healing ointment. Scripturally, it was used to anoint the anointing of the Holy Spirit and all the effects that the anointing imparts. Something else very important. Back in those days, when someone was anointed, how were they anointed? The anointer put oil on his hands, and then applied the oil with his hands. So if you were anointed, you've had a hands-on experience because the oil, the anointed, is imparted by hands. So when Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me, it first of all meant God's hand is on me. And because God's hand came on me, God's presence, his power, his oil came upon me, 
and how Jesus has been anointed. When was he anointed? At the River Jordan when he received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's what happens to you. And Jesus says he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. You see, Jesus is divinely infused with power just like you to take the gospel to whoever needs it. And when Jesus says to preach the gospel, huh, that phrase to preach the gospel is a very important word. In Greek, it is a word which means to preach good news. But you know what? The word good news in Greek was first used in the earliest, earliest, earliest known sense to describe a medium or a channeler of evil spirits who channeled the spirit realm. But in this particular case, it's used in a godly way. And Jesus says, I'm to be a channel for the good news. God wants me to be a channel. He's anointed me to be an open conduit for his power to flow through me to others, to preach the good news, to deliver the good news. is not just a verbiage, it's power with the verbiage. And he says, first of all, to the poor. The word poor is a Greek word petokos, which describes abject poverty or those that are impoverished. The gospel is good news for people that are in abject poverty. You are anointed when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit to make a difference in the economic condition of people that are around. You have power to change their circumstances. But Jesus goes on to say, He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. The word heal and brokenhearted here is very important. Brokenhearted is from the Greek word suntribo, which was first used to describe the crushing of grapes, the crushing of grapes, or the smashing of bones. As used in this context, it depicts people who've been walked on by others, crushed by others, or those who feel they have been smashed to pieces in life and in relationships, shattered, smashed, crushed in relationships. And Jesus says for those that have been smashed, those that have been crushed in relationships, he's come with healing power. That word healing is a Greek word, eomai. The word eomai means to cure, and usually it refers to a progressive cure. It often depicts a healing power that progressively reverses a condition over a period of time or a sickness or ailment that is progressively healed rather than instantaneously healed, which means when people have been crushed by life, they've been smashed by relationships, they feel like they have been shattered by people. Brokenhearted really is what the Greek says, the Greek word suntribo, broken in their hearts. Jesus comes with eomai, a power that will touch them right now and keep touching them, and progressively it will continue making them better and better and better and better until finally they totally recover Jesus said, I was anointed at the River Jordan with special power. The hand of God came on me. The power of God came on me that is going to make a difference in the economic conditions of the poor. It's going to set free healing power that's going to restore those who feel like they've been broken by life relationships. And then he says to preach deliverance to the captives. He was anointed to preach. You've been anointed to preach. You may say, well, I don't know how to tell others the good news. I don't know how to be a conduit for the power. You've been anointed for it. If you'll surrender, the power will flow through you. You'll become a preacher. You'll become a declarer of the good news. And the Bible says to preach deliverance to the captives. Wow, this word captives is a Greek word which describes prisoners, but in Greek it's a compound. It describes a prisoner, and it also is a Greek word which describes a spear, and the point of the spear is in the back of the prisoner. It's to take a prisoner hostage, to take them by force. They have no choice. There's a spear pointed in their back. This is someone who is taken hostage or taken into captivity against their will. It can refer to captivity of all kinds. It could be captivity to relationships, a captivity to a bad self-image. It could be captivity to drugs, any kind of addict addiction, any kind of habit that's taken you captive, Jesus has come to bring deliverance. And the word deliverance means release, to loosen. He's come to release people that are in bondage. He's come to loosen them. And the Bible goes on to say recovering of sight to the blind. The word recovering is a Greek word means to get your sight back again. You're going to be able to see again. You're going to be able to think again the way that you used to think. Things are going to be restored to you. The word blind is a Greek word tuflos. Listen to this. 
It doesn't just depict a person who's unable to see, but a person who's been intentionally blinded by someone else, one whose eyes have been removed, and that's why he can't see. This individual hasn't just lost his sight. His eyes have been gouged out. He has no eyes to see. But when you move in the power of God, you have the ability to give people eyes again. As the Holy Spirit works through you, He gives people eyes to see. Maybe Satan has gouged out their eyes. Or maybe because of difficult situations in life, they become blind to events and blind to reality. But when you move in the power of the Holy Spirit, people get eyes to see what they need to see. The Bible says to set at liberty them that are bruised. Set at liberty is the Greek word aphasis, which means to set free, to loosen. In this case, it means to loosen from the detrimental effects of a shattered life. The Greek speaks of a release from the destructive effects of brokenness. This is talking about broken people or those whose lives have been fragmented, maybe fragmented by relationships, fragmented by divorce, fragmented by financial situations or by health situations, fragmented, shattered. Here, the King James Version calls it those that are bruised. That word bruised depicts a person who has been shattered or fractured by a life. It pictures those whose lives have been continually split up and fragmented. But Jesus said, hey, when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, I received a power which will release people from the fragmented condition of their life. This is amazing. And that's not all. Listen to what chapter 4 verse 19 says. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. That word acceptable is the Greek word dektos. This word dektos means something that is favorable, something that is accepted, or it is a favorable time to receive something or to act on something. Which means when Jesus' anointing shows up, that is the most favorable no moment you've ever had in your life. Because everything you need is on the spot to heal you, to make you whole, to restore you. All of that is in the baptism in the Holy Spirit that Jesus received and you've received it as well. When you receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit, it's not just a power that comes in you to do something for you. Indeed, it does. But you become a channel to preach the gospel to people in all these various categories. God wants you to become a conduit of divine power. The power comes in you and flows through you. It's not just about you. It's about the people around you who really need a divine touch. Those that are depressed, those that are sick, those that are fractured and fragmented, they all need a divine touch. Rather than pray for the divine touch just to fall out of heaven, it wants to flow through you. That's why you've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You are to be a conduit of divine power that brings deliverance, restoration, healing, and blessing. All of that is in you. Well, we're out of time, but I'll be back in just a moment. I'm going to pray for you. The Holy Spirit was sent to empower and comfort believers. In Rick Renner's teaching series, The Baptism in the Holy Spirit, Rick answers the hard questions about this often misunderstood person of the Trinity and the power he gives to every believer. In this series, Rick covers topics like speaking in other tongues, moving in the supernatural, and the power of change. Available in digital or physical formats starting at just $10. When you call or go online today, you can also get the companion book, the Holy Spirit in you. Truly knowing Him allows you to work together to fulfill your calling, live in peace, and experience joy. Together, the Holy Spirit in you will accomplish God's purpose for you on the earth. Available for just $15 when you call or go online today. The sermon series, The Baptism in the Holy Spirit, and the book, The Holy Spirit in You. Call now, 1-800-742-5593, or go to renner.org to order. My name is Joel Renner, coming to you right from Moscow, Russia. And I want to say thank you to all of our ministry partners. It's because of your support that we can help people fighting addictions get their families and their lives back. All around the world, there is a huge drug crisis. Maybe you know someone who has suffered or is suffering from alcohol and drug addictions. The cycle of addiction is a terrible thing. Because of the generous support of our partners, we have been able to join with several Christian rehab centers where men and women can be trained to reintegrate into the workplace, receive the medical help they need, 
and have a support system in place so they're not isolated and alone. Because of your generous support, we have seen people with hepatitis C get well, many who lost their family relationships get back together, and many others who were on heroin, cocaine, and other drugs receive freedom and become complete people again. This has been made possible through partners who support our work. Your gift makes this kind of a difference. These people need your help. Please call 1-800-742-5593 or go online to randy.org to give a gift of any size. Because of your support, we are able to make a huge difference in people's lives. You are supposed to be a conduit of divine power. That's right. You're not a weakling. God gives you the baptism of the Holy Spirit to make you mighty, dunamis. Mighty power has come in you, and the intention of that power is that it would flow through you. That's why Jesus said in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me because... You see, there was a because, there was a reason, and then Jesus began to enumerate all the reasons the power came in to go out. And the power you have received is not supposed to reside just inside you. You are to be a conduit. You're to be a pipe, a channel through which the power of God flows to change the environment around you, to change the quality of other people's lives, to bring healing to the sick, freedom to the depressed. All of that can happen if you will let the power of God operate through you. That's what the baptism in the Holy Spirit does. It is amazing. And if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, let us pray with you. Call us right now. You'll receive it if you'll call us. We'll pray with you, and heaven will invade your space right now. Amen. And by the way, we're offering you my series called The Baptism in the Holy Spirit. It's five parts. It comes with a great study guide. You're just going to love this. It's really going to make a difference for you. And we're also offering you my book, which is called The Holy Spirit and You, Working Together as Heaven's dynamic duo. If you'll work with the Holy Spirit, you will become heaven's dynamic duo, you and the Holy Spirit. But I want to pray for you. Father, we thank you so much that you didn't just save us and leave us to wait till heaven. You let heaven invade us right now through the person and the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you that when the power of the Holy Spirit operates in us, we are greater than all the opposition. We have the healing that people need we have the deliverance that people need. And Father, in the name of Jesus today, we make the choice to release the power and become the pipe, become the conduit through which the power flows. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being with me today. It's been so good to be with you and to share. Remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, it says, where the word of a king is, there's power. It's really the truth. So let the Word of God work in you today and you will experience its power. And I'll see you in the next program. Thank you for watching this broadcast. For more information on product resources or to learn how you can partner with this ministry, please connect with us at renner.org or call 1-800-742-5593. Also, please be sure to visit us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.